Hello, hello. This is just going to be a quick video showcasing the desktop editing abilities that you have in Resonite. To start off, we have our most commonly used tools bound to the number keys on our keyboard. If I press 2, I get a dev tip. If I press 3, I get a protoflux tip. If I press 4, I get a material tip. 5 through 0, I've actually never used these. Someone in the comments can probably tell me what they are, but they're probably useful. To go back to our normal holding state, we just press 1 and we're back home. Now for this example, I'm going to showcase just a general workflow of something very simple. I'm going to be scaling a box from 0 0.2 to 1.3. This isn't meant to be a Protoflux tutorial. This is just showing what the workflow is like in desktop mode. So if we want to create our box, we'll press 2 for our dev tip, press T to open our context menu, create new 3D model box, and we have a box. We'll select this by going to our dev tip and then pressing R. R is the secondary key if you see anyone refer to it as that. So we'll press R on the box. We'll open our context menu with T and then open inspector. Now you see this inspector is a very slightly out of line. I actually did it quite well, so you can't really see it. But if you want to align something here, if you want to align something that's very out, out rotated to like your view, you can hold it by holding right click and then press left click. And it snaps directly parallel to like your facing view. And it's just really nice. Something I use literally all the time in desktop mode. And that's really, that's really it. Now, if we want this box to do things, uh, we probably want to mess around in the inspector a bit. So like say we change this 1.2, 1.3, and you'll notice while I'm doing this that it's kind of clunky to move our view around, our entire view around, just to change these values. So another really useful part of desktop mode is First off, we'll get out of the way so our viewport, so our character doesn't block our viewport, and then we'll control click on this. This will focus our view uh, parallel to our inspector right here, and it allows us to freely move the mouse and change values and whatever without actually moving our first person view. And this is super useful, it's super nice. Again, I use this all the time. And yeah, so we're going to want to make this box actually scale and do things. Uh, you might have noticed that I panned while in that view. To pan, you hold control and then press right click. And now, so long as you move the mouse and you are holding control, you can continue panning. If you want to zoom in and out, we'll hold control and then scroll up or down and this zooms in and out respectively. If we want to get out, we will hold control and then press somewhere that is not a 2D panel. If we press a 2D panel, we'll focus on it again. We need to click outside and then we will unfocus from it. But of course, we want to go back in here. We'll pan sideways of it. We'll press 3 to go to our protoflux set. Open our context menu with T and then browse nodes. Now, a good thing about being in this view is that new 2D planes that you spawn spawn on the same plane as what you focus. So if I bring this over here, it kind of Z fights a bit with our inspector. Of course, we don't want that. So I can hold it with right click, go to our inspector, and then scroll to make it in front of it. And I will scroll our view out a bit. And eh, maybe we want to scale this down a bit so it doesn't block all of that inspector. So we'll hold our thing with right click. Hold shift and then scroll, and then we can scale it down or up. We'll scale it down a bit, just so that it doesn't block everything. And then we can probably scroll back more. Now, this box is probably going to get in our way, so we'll hold it with right click and then scroll so that it's no longer in our way. Now, this isn't meant to be a protoflux tutorial, as I said before, so I'm just going to quickly go through like everything that we'll need. We'll go to elapse time, elapse time float. And you can see it spawns on the same plane, so it kind of z-fights a bit with our inspector. Again, really nice. Do math, trigonometry, sine, sine float. We'll go back, back, remap, we'll remap. And then, is that it? I think that's it. Ah, uh, no, we need to go to operators. Operators, 
packing, pack three, pack float three, and we have our thing. Oh, this isn't meant to be signed. I accidentally didn't do a remap. How silly. Remap, remap float. There we go. We'll plug this in here, plug this into value, and we'll plug all of this into here. Now, something you might notice as I bring these inputs out is that, well, this kind of gets in the way of everything. We'll have to make all this down here, and then we'll have all this over here, and that's just not something that I like seeing. So what I usually do for my workflow is I hold it, and then I bring it back by scrolling one notch. And I do this for all the inputs of like things, things that I don't think will change and aren't really important to grasp for like the intricacies or important to grasp in the general flow. Like I want my flow to be focused such as, oh, this goes from an elapsed time to a sign to a remap and then we pack it. I don't need to know all of these in the same, I guess you could say, layer as our more important stuff. So after I do that, I'll just move that out of the way and then change all of these manually. I don't know, 0 0.2 to 1.3. And we'll pan back over here with, again, control and right click. And then we'll bring out the scale by holding right click, bringing it out, opening our context menu with T, and then drive. And then we'll plug this in here. And there we go. We have our box going from scale 0 0.2 to 1.3, just by sign. Now, again, not really meant to be a protoflex tutorial, which is why I went super fast. It's just to showcase like the workflow and what I usually do in here. So if we go out of this by control clicking outside and we go to a more complicated thing over here, let me just stall. And if we control click this node right here, we get focus to it. We scroll outwards and you can just see that like following this sort of 2D plane, uh, scrolling in and out for different layers makes our protoflux look very, very, very nice. Like, I can tell that, oh, we, we write this, this writes to the is cast, and when it changes, we fire on true, play the one shot, set the parent, all of that, and I don't have to worry about all of these audio clips, fishing, slots, and stuff just getting in the way of what our main logic is. Like, the main things that uh, should be internalized for this. Now we'll get back out here. Some more just generally useful keybinds uh, for desktop mode. If I go into third person with F5 and then I flick my mouse around, you can see that it goes, it, like I, I can see my face, I can move forward. Well, I can't move backwards because that would just make me turn around, but I can pretty much just like debug like something that's happening near my face or if I want to see behind me, that like actually turning around or whatever, for some reason, that might be useful. A variant of this is if I press F6, this goes into a third person mode. So if I equip this, and you get a neat little laser wire in here, I can debug and see like, oh, just in case this was like going some random direction, I can test in F6 and see like, oh, it's going in that direction. Oh, that's like rotated 90 degrees, I can fix that. While you're in this mode, you can hold control and then press right click. And now, if, so long as you keep control held, you can use W, A, S, and D, as well as space and C to move the freeform camera around, just to get a better view of like everything that's happening. If you need to debug something more, and I guess just like get a better view of everything that's around you. Like I can select this box from here. If we go back into normal mode by pressing F5, one last useful desktop key bind, especially if you are in something like flight mode. Like you can see if I go, if I try to like tap D and A to like move around, it's not really that great. So if I press Z, this slows our movement and you can see that like tapping makes it really, really steppy now. Like I can move 
a much less distant, which is something that proves time and time again incredibly useful for working with Flux or if I need to see what's going on like over here. Again, this was really quick, just meant to be like a workflow demonstration, I guess, of everything that's offered to you in desktop mode. Uh, in some ways, I consider it probably better than VR mode. I can't say for certain. In some ways, it's probably worse than VR mode, but I'd say overall, it's probably on the same level as like VR mode being experienced. I hope this helped literally anyone else who is in desktop mode to help like internalize the controls, get into a workflow, get in here, pan around, all that good stuff, and that'll be it.